Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so uh, those of you that are um, just getting in here, uh, we are about to interview uh, the Robert Slack and the Robert Slack team um, with regards to how they route their leads. Um, they are the number one team in the world uh, and uh, they know what they're doing. So I'm, I'm gonna be really selfish. I already told Robert, I'm gonna just try to learn all their secrets and then you guys get to listen. <clears throat> Very kind of you to say that we know what we're doing. You know, it's been kind of, uh, being that I didn't have any uh, experience at this when I got started, I never worked for one of the, the big companies or anything. It was kind of, we stumbled along and found out what worked and what didn't. And uh, here we are. We've uh, done about 15,000 homes in the last five or six years. So uh, we now, Pretty much, I think we, at least we think we know what we're doing anyway. That's the main thing. So, so. Well, you know, I, I'm curious because I've heard you allude to that. You know, you, you, you came into the industry not that long ago. Um, do you feel like life experience helped you to um, manage your business as well as you did? To, yeah, to so actually uh, all those hours that I spent sitting on the seat of a John Deere tractor uh, really <laughs> was invaluable experience for uh, for working with the uh, follow-up boss and uh, trying to uh, <clears throat> dodge the vagaries of Zillow and Realtor.com. It was it was wonderful, you know, so. Uh, well, I mean, how many years were you on a John Deere tractor? Uh, lots, okay. Really? Well, being that I was uh, about uh, uh, 67 when I opened the brokerage uh, and ever since uh, I was in my early 30s, I'd been a farmer of one type or another, so. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, lots of uh, experience with the John Deere tractor. But you know, I mean, and, and I think this goes this goes into our c conversation with lead flow. I mean, you you can't run a disorganized farm well. You know, it, it's not, you're not going to grow anything. That's true. That's true. Yeah. You've got to be very organized, particularly if you're growing peaches and nectarines, because when you go out and look at them and they're ready to pick, uh, and uh, six hours later you miss them. And you missed really? the whole year because they can be turning soft on the tree. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so you have to be organized and get them picked at the right time and uh, and stuff like that. So well, and that's you know with leads, right? We Why we not? gotta you gotta speed strike to the lead. Iron's hot. You know that yep. was the experience I got. You know, speed to lead, speed to get the peaches picked, speed to lead. So it's always been our mantra: has speed to lead, and uh, always will be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're five minutes in, so we're going to go ahead and um, I've already started kind of, um, but we're going to go ahead and pick the brains of the number one team in the country, in the world, uh, with how they're distributing uh, all their leads. Um, and you guys still get a lot of leads from Realtor.com and Wilopo and some other places. Is that a good summary kind of? Yeah, so we, uh, we process about, uh, uh, well, Realtor.com has been sending us all their extra leads uh, that they've generated in uh, January. So I hate to tell you what my bill is, but generally on an average, we're processing a thousand to fifteen hundred leads a day. Um, wow. And uh, so it's quite a lot. So, and how many agents does that go to? Ballpark? No, yeah, ballpark uh, five, six hundred. You know, okay. altogether we've got about six hundred not agent, but there were about five hundred not that get leads. Okay, so interesting. So that's like three three leads a person if it was distributed easily. Yeah, it's too evenly. many. Too yeah. many. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Don, um, I know that you know you're you're in the back seat of the car going to an award ceremony for the team. So it must be tough being so popular. Um, but uh, <laughs> want to know, you know, from your standpoint, since we're talking about fifteen hundred leads uh, a day, five hundred agents. Um, you know, how are you managing that, that lead flow? And then what we need to do is break those num big numbers down to small numbers for the rest of us normal people to make sure we, we can, you know, do the math of, you know, because nor normally we don't get three leads a day, right? I mean, it's just uh, um, for a whole team. So uh, right. how do you guys handle that? I mean, for, for us, it's been a process uh, about a year now. And Robert certainly, you know, and Dan had, had laid a, a great foundation and had the basics there. And, and after kind of Moving this in, we start seeing all the different sources as well, which which began introducing some complexities. We we started upping our PPC buy, 
uh, Google Local Services ads now, other sources plus Realtor. Um, so parsing those out for us, uh, considering that we're in 700 zip codes throughout the entire state of Florida, we've actually got 600 plus uh, agents in production. We've been ramping up considerably. We still have more leads than we have agents like every day. They just get inundated. So we've got a structure on the back end of follow-up boss with the lead rules um, that we've got multiple, we've got round robin groups uh, that handle the normal lead flow. Probably somewhere, I think I've got 438 rules now in follow-up boss to give you an idea uh, just wow. for the realtor. Yeah. Um, so they're broken up at, by zip code into each uh, round robin group. And then for each one of those, we've got a sub rule that is our pool rule. So we put in a price threshold because again, if we were to just open up that floodgate and that's part of our challenge is we had agents that were getting 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 leads a month and they yes, just couldn't. Um, so that led us into putting into price threshold. So if it's, if it's uh, you know, above a certain price threshold and we control that now pretty much on a weekly basis, Anything that doesn't hit that threshold will go into a pool that has been managed by our ISA team to look for the hand raisers. And then those other leads get routed to the agents via round robin. And then an additional rule we have, because with our PPC teams, we've got first to claim groups set up. So when our, when our ISAs uh, are able to work through and find a hand raiser or somebody that wants to see a property or is going to buy, they put those then into a first acclaim group, an agent claims it, and then we do a hot handoff, much in the way uh, uh, Zillow does with their hot handoff. So, right. Uh, and so that's between the ISA and the, the agent, that hot handoff? Correct. Okay. Correct. Got it. And then uh, from a how do we manage that perspective, I mean, the being able to manage that strictly within follow-up boss, obviously you can't get a report of, you know, who's in which group and what they're. So I've actually got a VA uh, and our IT guy um, who help manage that, they keep a separate spreadsheet that lists each individual group. Uh, it has which agents are in it. They track lead flow weekly to make sure that we're not inundating or in instances where, for whatever reason, realtor.com leads get throttled or accelerated. We can make those adjustments real time. Uh, so it okay. is a pretty, it's a comprehensive program we've got set up. Yeah. No, that's, if uh, any of you ever thinks that you're going to outgrow follow-up boss, then you're really going to have to uh, add a lot of agents and a lot of leads because they seem to handle them perfectly for us. So it was always yeah. something we worried about in the early days was uh, uh, could follow-up boss handle it, you know, but uh, it seems to just handle it perfect. Well, how many leads yeah, we'll do you guys have in your database again? That's a lot. We're at 830,000 right now as we speak. Yeah, I remember you saying you were getting to the million. Do you know if Follow Boss added that extra zero already? Yeah, for the million, I'm not sure. About that. <laughs> That's a good hey. point. Yeah, we've got now, I think, in the system, we probably have right at 600, no, I'm sorry, right at 750 or 800 users when you consider ISAs, VAs, PCs, yeah. all of that. Uh, and then if you roll in, you know, the leads, it's just, uh, and it, it handles the load. I mean, you know, obviously, and they're very responsive. I mean, follow up boss is just great. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, so by now, those that have been listening are like, if they didn't know who you were, they're probably, you've got their attention, right? They're like, wow, that's a lot of leads. That's a lot of agents. That's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of. <laughs> so now what we've got to do is um, kind of extract some of this because I'm really interested. I know why I personally feel this way, but I'm very interested, uh, Robert, if you want to kick us off, you know, what I heard was all of your agents get round robin, but then when the ISA converts the lead, um, uh, it goes first to claim. Why do you feel like distributing the leads via round robin is the way to go? So uh, it's just been easier for us because particularly uh, uh, what we do, we put about uh, five or six agents into a group and it's mm -hmm. a geographical group, which will comprise maybe two or three zip codes. Um, mm -hmm. And they're distributed inside that group by a, a round robin, largely. There are some uh, variations like Don was saying, but it also makes it much easier when a member of that group either has to be away for a weekend, they've got mm -hmm. an event that they have to go to, they need, can't take leads for a day or they're on vacation. It's much easier just to pop them out of that group so that the agents, uh, so that the other agents in the group get the leads. Yeah. Also, what has been an integral part of our business is we have uh, multiple call centers. 
Uh, we have two offshore call centers. We have uh, about 60 people in the Philippines and uh, they do uh, at the northern part of Florida for us. And bearing in mind, they are not bilingual in the Philippines uh, yeah. and they are on the other side of the world and they do an outstanding job and they, uh, they handle a lot of the, the live handoffs to the agents. Mm -hmm. uh, now for the southern part of the state, we have a, about the same number in Venezuela uh, who Smart. are uh, bilingual. Uh, mm -hmm. They generally have a higher level of education because a lot of these are professional people uh, they're, you know, engineers and accountants and people like that. And uh, they work uh, also as, uh, as VAs for our team leaders. And a lot of our agents also have uh, individual VAs through them. And they, they've become an integral part of our business. So, um, yeah, I've got four in the Philippines, so I'm catching up to you. Yeah, yeah, you're right there. Yes, I'm yeah. on my way. Yeah. Um, so uh, question for you with regards to, so if the leads are being assigned to the agents via round robin, where do the ISAs come in with the lead assignment? Are they being assigned to the ISA and the agent? No, with the, uh, with the, the ISA teams we have in the uh, Philippines and Venezuela um, are all... Um, they're managing the pool, the ponds, right? So we've got um, all of our ponds set up uh, based upon territory. So we've got 16 different teams. Uh, those ponds are set up and then we have uh, ISA teams that are monitoring those ponds. So as uh, okay. we get those hand raiser activities, right? Came back to the site, visited again, favorited at home, whatever. Uh, the ISAs are reaching out immediately to those folks because they're monitoring those all the time. And then once they get a connect, they ask that million dollar question, are you going to be buying a home in the next four months or will you be renting? If the answer mm -hmm. is yes, they get them right over to an agent. So then with the new lead, so what I'm hearing is, correct me if I'm wrong, the ISAs are really there is like a, a stopgap. They're catching everything in the ponds and, and um, well, almost like a nurture. So so we're talking about largely, we've talked about so far, the leads coming from realtor.com, which is our, our largest uh, yeah. uh, lead supplier. So those leads coming to follow up boss, they, mm -hmm. we have a call center in Ocala too, that uh, mm -hmm. tries to set an appointment and they simultaneously go to the agent uh, or to the, uh, the group. Now, the, our other lead sources, particularly our pay-per-click and, uh, and uh, through Wailopo, um, those go straight into follow-up boss and, and largely don't go straight to the agent. And they're worked by the call centers in the Philippines and Venezuela until we get okay. hand raises and then they do live handoffs in follow-up boss uh, to the agents on in the zip code. Okay. Yeah, because we realized early on that the, you know PPC leads are more top of funnel, right? So we're, we're letting them do their thing. The, the challenge we have, Barry, and I'm going to throw out a gratuitous plug here, um, we, we could literally use 400 agents. So if you know licensed agents in the state of Florida or that are thinking about relocating, we need 400 today to handle our lead flow. Uh, nothing okay. would make us happy than to route everything through our round robin directly to, to, to agents. Uh, it's just far, far, far too many. And, and yeah. the crazy thing is that we have live handoffs coming from our, uh, from our VAs overseas and the agents are too busy to pick up the phone. Can you imagine that? They've got a, a live handoff for someone who wants to see a $500,000 property tomorrow and the, the agent's not picking up the phone, you know. Wow. Um, drives me nuts, you know, so it's, uh, yeah. It's a good problem, but it's it is a, good a problem. problem but it's, a, it's, it's a product of us having too many leads. Yeah, yeah, so um, in that same vein, too many leads, um, you know, uh, I always kind of ascribe to trying to keep the lead count under 30, because if I didn't, I'd be teaching my agent to look for low hanging fruit. Yeah. Um, but with you guys, with, with you having your ISAs focused on the PPC and then the nurturing and then the realtor.com going to the Florida ISA team, I think I'm, I think I have it right, more or less. Um, how, how are you helping your agents to make sure that they are uh, talking to humans and showing houses and writing contracts. Like, how do you 
ensure that they're doing that? Is that a team leader role or? Uh, largely, yes. So it, uh, it goes, the, everything rolls downhill. You know, it rolls from Dan and I to Don here and we put the pressure on him. And so he's reaching out to the team leaders. Why are they not picking up the phone? And the team leader is then under pressure to make sure that their agents are, uh, are picking up the phone. Now, one of the problems that we have is that we never know exactly how many leads we're going to get because realtor.com at certain times a year, our lead flow will be half what it is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then we have agents complaining they don't have enough leads. So uh, it just so happens that right at the moment, we have a, a huge influx of leads and it's good and it's bad. Uh, the agents are, are not picking up the phones. We get it and we're having to pay for leads that we're not answering always. But they are going into our database. So at some stage, we're going to keep uh, keep uh, getting after them in the database. And we put a number of we put a number of processes in place, Barry, to really help do that. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, for about the past month now, we've had a VA whose sole focus in life is managing that lead flow. He's in it every day, reviewing how many leads by by week each agent is getting, so we can adjust that. Um, the flip side of it, too, is we've uh, about six months ago started a lead rejuvenation program. Our biggest challenge was we were just having leads that weren't being communicated with. So now we leverage uh, follow up boss and look at that last direct communication. Right. It has a phone call been made. We've got parameters set up based on the age of the lead, when the last communication was and then based on stage. And if agents aren't communicating, we flow all those back into the pond. Um, so we're starting to manage that much more quickly. And another thing I'm super excited about that we're just starting to really implement is Octum. That's going to give our team leaders much more real-time access to who's calling, who isn't, how they're communicating with the lead. So we don't have to wait that whole month. Uh, they'll be able to see that real-time because it does integrate with follow-up boss. Uh, and they'll be able to pull those reports up daily and look at it and say, John's calling, Mary isn't, you know, here's your close rates, here's why. And it really lets us do a, a, a a much more accurate deep dive into the, the where things are falling apart for a particular agent or conversely where they're doing awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so say I'm a team leader and my agents uh, aren't picking up the phone. Like they're not, the ISAs are doing their job, but there seems to be a theme where stuff's not happening. Robert calls you, you call the team leader. What do you, what are you going to say to the team leader um, make it PG that, uh, you know, to, to, to <laughs> make sure that, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing my job because it sounds like, you know, it's not just as easy as writing a bunch of lead flow rules. There's more management involved. Um, there, there, you know, it's, it's a contact sport. I'll, I'll say this. We've, we've got some awesome team leaders and, and this was new to us for about a year, right? We, the, about the past year, you know, the expectation was always there. I think the enforcement wasn't right. The, 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 the gravity of, Hey, we're literally, we could have been a $2 billion company last year instead of one and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and I think after the team leaders were presented with the data, you know, when we were able to show them that, Hey, here's what's really going on. And here is the expectation. Um, we gave them the tools and, and quite frankly, we monitor it, but they're embracing it now. I'm not having to go to them and have those difficult conversations. They are already starting to reach out to the agents even before I am and saying, hey, you're not calling. This isn't happening. You know, do I need to pause your leads? Um, there have been some difficult conversations over the past six months and, and the team leaders, all of them have stepped up uh, and, and really started I don't want to say putting the pressure on, but holding people accountable, right? Um, you know, my thing has always been, and I've said this over and over, you know, Robert talks about his first leads, you know, and he was buying $168 leads from Zillow and that he treated them like gold. And mm -hmm. I, 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 I tell all of my team leads, I'm like, guys, we need to have that same attitude because, you know, if, if you had to, if you figure we spent a mil two last month in leads from just realtor, realtor alone, right? That's basically just shy of $100,000 per team leader. And I challenged them. I said, hey, how would you like to stroke me a check for $100,000 so we can pass it back to Robert for the number of leads that you got last month? How right. important would those leads be then? You know, right. And I think right. that, that kind of shifted perspective. So they've been embracing that quite a bit. That's nice. I've got some people, got a lot of questions, but a few people just asked um, about the program that you offered. Uh, I believe you said it was Octum, A-U-C-T-M. Correct. And, and they're still, I mean, they are working with some select brokers. They're not um, ready for market yet full on, but, but check it out. Uh, their, their website is up and going. It's, it's a great augment follow-up boss. Actually, it's, 
it's a CRM agnostic, uh, oddly enough. They can make it work with any CRM, uh, but obviously we use it with, with Follow Up Boss. And it's, it, it gives you such a deep dive and granular look into, uh, into the analytics, into the management. It's actually going to, they're coming out with a new version now where you can actually nudge agents in mass based on, on particular leads that haven't been communicated with from right there within the portal. Uh, it provides one-on-one -on -one analytics where you can really take a look and have a consultation with an agent, uh, you know, mark where we began, go back in a month later, see where they're at. You'll be able to see that delta to really have some, some great conversations. Look at the lead flow in the funnel. Uh, you know, are you making enough calls? If you're making enough calls, are you setting appointments? Is it the dialogue? If you're setting appointments, are you getting, you know, written contracts? Are they not getting accepted? You know, so where is the breakdown? Do I need to work on deal craft with you or do I need to work on negotiation? Uh, so it really allows some very, very deep analytics uh, across the board for team management. Yeah, the owner of Octum actually reached out and dangled, Robert Slack has us. Do you want us? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you that they're, they are a team of some of the brightest guys that I've ever met. And they yeah. do a really good job. So we like Oh, them. that's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, what I'm hearing, you know, this is the, the this webinar is about lead flow, but you know, when we're talking about lead flow, it it involves a lot of pieces because you know it's it's uh, it's complicated. Um, and I so, thought, how often? Oh, go ahead. So I saw there was a question out there as to uh, talking about the team leaders, and the team leaders do operate really as team managers, and okay. they're incentivized by how the team does. They're also incentivized by the conversion ratio of the team. So, uh, so they are team managers. If they have a smaller team, some of the uh, team leaders do take a few overflow leads, but generally they are managing their team. And what about communications? Uh, do you require that the agents use follow up boss to communicate with? Uh, yeah, you indeed. We, yeah. It's, well, I mean, again, the expectation is if it does, if it's not in follow up boss, it never happened. Uh, and if, if those leads are in there, uh, at the end of the month, if you haven't communicated, they're going to be brought back into the pond. Uh, you won't have the access to that lead anymore. Interesting. That that's uh, so you go into the last communication and you're like, oh, it's empty. We're moving it. Yep. So we've got specific parameters based upon the uh, the stage of the lead, uh, and if if the communication isn't within that parameter. It's, it's going back to the pond for somebody who wants to work it. When we first instituted that, it uh, caused some uh, uh, a rash of high blood pressure among some of the agents, but uh, they now know <laughs> it's happening. And so they, they uh, make sure they get all of the leads. Yeah, so that I, I've never done that, but I've been trying to figure out how to manage because you know it seems as though some agents like to just quickly change the stage to say, oh, this is a good one. And then they kind of just, you know, let it die on the vine. Um, how do you how do you make sure that, uh, or as far as when you're reviewing the communication on, on behalf of the agents, are you reviewing that with the is the team lead reviewing it daily, and you guys are doing that weekly, or is it a monthly thing? It, you are you saying communication just in general, whether or not people are placing calls, and yeah, just the the yeah the data there as far as the performance side. It's, it's on a continuum. Again, leveraging Octum, that's going to get easier, but the team leaders now are aware of what's going on. So we've created, I'm, I'm known around Robert Slack as a smart list guy. Uh, so we have smart list after smart list, looking at every conceivable variation of lack of communication. Uh, and the team leaders actually now, each one of them have at least one VA. Many of them have multiple VAs who go through those lists daily. They'll nudge agents. They'll actually send out, they'll help agents out. If agents are inundated with stuff and can't do it, and then you've got some nurtures or some leads that need to be touched, they, the, the VAs will assist with that. So we're, we're lending a helping hand to that as well. Uh, but the team leaders are owning that piece of the business. I mean, they, they do own it for us. So this is interesting because it seems as though in almost every part of this lead flow discussion, the, the topic of virtual assistant has come up in some form or fashion. So talk to me about that. How did you guys come to the conclusion that the VA was the way to go to supplement the workflow of your lead flow? Um, well, it, it kind of happened stance. We started with our ISA team in the Philippines. 
Um, and then there was a conversation actually with one of our team leaders because we were thinking about how we could leverage virtual assistance because we saw that was just a huge need uh, for our agents, for our team leaders, because there's, again, with that many leads, with that much business, we were just losing so much. So yeah. we were able to get connected with a, a group in Venezuela, uh, and we had you know negotiated a, a super deal. Um, and from that point, we structured out a program that individual agents could get VAs. Each one of our um, team leaders opted in. We actually employed some for our own staff. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's to the point now, uh, we've got uh, Lucas Rowell, we've got uh, Samantha Boyd, Hugo Rivera. Uh, all of them have created kind of a VA program on steroids. They will go, they go now and they've hired four, five, or six VAs. And then they, for lack of a better word, sublet them to agents. So they'll, they'll charge agents a quarter and they'll have four agents per VA. They manage them, they train them, they teach them everything they need to know and, and let the VAs really help them with the business. It's with the way things are going, right? I mean, when you think about, they, they cost us 750 bucks a month, right? $4 and 98 cents an hour for a 40 hour week. Where is an agent's time more? I mean, it's simple math, right? As, as yeah. an agent, whether you're a single agent working or a broker working alone, or you've got a small team or a large team, you know, where is your agent's time more valuable? On the road showing, writing contracts, or sitting at home nurturing and, and making phone calls? Um, yeah. So no, it, was, it was kind of simple math. We got hooked up with a great company. They manage it. They've got the facilities. Uh, we train them fully. We make sure that they understand our processes and, and the expectations. Uh, and then we've got uh, uh, the young lady who, who oversees our Ocala Call Center, Elizabeth Ordonez. Uh, she also supervises that entire team in Venezuela. So we've got four supervisors now in Venezuela that work for the company, and then they report directly, not work for Robert Slack, but work for Miami Virtual Assistance, and they then report to her. So she kind of manages that whole flow over there. And then and everyone our, wants our to know. Team oh. In, oh, sorry, our team oh, in, uh, in uh, the Philippines, we have teams doing random things over there. Like, for example, we've got 12 people over there doing nothing but push listings. Really? Because we know the agent's <laughs> never going to get round to it. So we have 12 people do nothing but push listings. And uh, is that the Wilopo? Yeah. Uh, push so, listing? Okay. Yeah. We, we literally have them go through. Uh, they will, and, and they're in the pond. They're also an agent. So if an agent hasn't communicated with the lead in a while, uh, they will go through. We've got templates all set up. They'll grab a couple properties that the person's already looked at or maybe one similar. Uh, we've got a nice little email template set up right through Wailopo. It drives them right back. Um, and that, that started about four months ago. It was kind of interesting. I was, I was actually creating a video to show to our agents on how to do the push listings from Wailopo, right? And a little different way to give the thumb. Rather than just create the link, actually copy the, um, the URL and paste it into the body of an email, which gives you that cool little thumbnail. Uh, so I was showing them how to do that. And I had three different scenarios set up. One guy had been to realtor.com like, 15 or 18 times and inquired over the past two years, had never gone to our site, multiple inquiries, nobody ever worked him. So I did him first, sent a push listing, went on and did two others. By the time I came back to that lead, he had already been on the site and clicked on four different listings in, my local, in, in our search site. I walked into Dan's office and I said, Dan, we've got to do something. I think that was Thursday. We talked about it with Debbie on Friday. And by Monday, we had six people in the Philippines doing it. And are you texting those listings uh, to people or emailing? All, all of the above. They get an email and a text message, all templated. Uh, the great thing about that is I think we've, we've gotten, I think when I looked at it, it was 148 closed deals at present since we started this that have all been pushed, that had a push listing tag assigned to it. So that's 148 deals. Now, I can't say that, that the push listing was the it, right, sure. behind why they did it, but it certainly was a part. Sure. Well, and so for those that don't know the Wailopo verbiage, what, what they're saying is that there's a way to select uh, properties on behalf of the lead and send it to the lead and the lead, you know, it's on the website and they're hand selected for them. And, and there's a lot of analytics there. Uh, uh, and uh, let's see, lots of people want to know about the call center, uh, the call centers you use. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you're not, you know, you're not, able to share those names, but people want to know who you're using. Um, and uh, I, you know, I don't know if you guys, uh, if, you, if you can't share the name. Uh, yeah. maybe no, no. no, it's okay. In, in, uh, in Venezuela, we use a company called Miami Virtual Assistance. Okay. And, and, and they are a VA company. 
in the Philippines, we work directly with the people. We don't use a company over that. The Philippines are a service industry uh, trained okay. nation. And okay. if you want uh, uh, 100 people, or if you, if you want someone to work your follow-up boss and you run an ad over there, you will have 100 applicants by Monday, mm -hmm. all of whom are very familiar with follow-up boss. They, yeah. they, they have lots and lots of people. And, and it's just a little bit of attrition. You hire, I mean, you, you interview 20 and you hire five that you really like and, and whatever, and one or two drop out, you hire some more. But they work directly for us. And they're, uh, they're about half the price of Venezuela. So they're about uh, $253 an hour. And um, so that's why we use them for stuff like push listings. And, uh, but they're yeah. not bilingual. And Florida has a lot of bilingual people. So that's why we use Venezuela in the heavily uh, um, Latin American. Yes. Yeah, we've, we've actually sent a number of, of customers already to, to MVA. I mean, they, they've been great. Uh, literally, when you, when you um, talk about running an ad over there, they have this. For us, I mean, we've been told both by the VA there as well as by the team, uh, we are the best job going in Venezuela right now. Uh, the the average minimum wage right now in Venezuela is seven dollars a month. Um, you know, with the overhead and everything else, uh, the, I think the VAs uh, make about uh, between one hundred and twenty five and one hundred and fifty dollars a month to them. Uh, the company assumes all the infrastructure, so they have offices, they've got supervision, they've got, um, it's a one to 15 ratio, so they've got one supervisor for every 15 agents, they provide all the tech and everything else. Um, but these folks, uh, you know, have a job that are, you know, I, a school teacher in Venezuela right now makes 10 bucks an hour. Uh, or 10, I'm sorry, 10, 10 dollars a month, my apologies. Yeah. Um, they just do a great job. When we post an ad, they're lined up around the block to get, to, to, to get a job. I mean, I know mine in Manila have been with me for three and a half years. And um, I remember talking to one of them and they just said, look, in, in, in our world, it's just nice to know that you have a job to come to. So it's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's great. Um, so some guy on the Facebook Live, some guy, Gary Ashton, uh, wanted to know um, team That's leaders. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are team leaders actively selling? L largely not. <laughs> Uh, they're okay. largely managing the team, but I don't, okay. I won't say that they never sell because some of the smaller teams uh, do take some overflow leads in order to uh, supplement them. Yeah, they, most of them are still, you know, getting deals, Zoom, uh, Zoom deals. I'm sorry, they're getting sphere deals. Um, the, the, they're not really taking any um, lead flow from uh, active lead flow via round robin or anything. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, are you guys using Ylopo's AI Raya? Yes, yeah, yeah, extensively. We're actually on Hatch by a Yeah, I just rewrote Be all of Raya. It's not released yet, but it, every single text message has been redone. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's see. So, and I'm, um, I'm gonna tell you, Ylopo is revolutionizing the industry as far as I'm concerned. So if you're not on it, you should be. Yeah. Well, we're we're humbled and honored to be working with you guys. It's been a great partnership. I don't know how many years we've been working together, but um, it's just been incredible. Um, let's see. So we're we're at 35 minutes. With, What's that? With Lopo too, and if you don't mind me butting in real quick, I mean beyond just the uh, you know the Facebook, the retargeting, remarketing, Raya. Um, just the, the innovation you guys come up with, why Lopo comes up with, you know, we were on with G a few weeks ago, started talking about GLSA ads, right? Google local services. We're already up and running on that in four different markets. I think we've already handed off 40, 50 uh, clients as a result of them. Just the fact that, you know, having partners like that who are looking into those things and, and keeping us apprised of what's going on. I mean, we're busy running a brokerage. You guys are busy, you know, doing what, what why Lopo does and, and they just do it exceptionally well so uh, trusted partner all the way through yeah i mean um, i remember so for five months we've been trying to get on the google local service ads and it was sunday night and kiwi and g and i are talking about um you know how to get this and uh we finally find the link to start the process and uh and i'm doing it on my phone filling up doing out a background check 
and I've had the same experience uh, with the Google local ads. Um, they've been pretty incredible. Um, we have a uh, weekly call. With, uh, we have a weekly call with G, uh, and and <laughs> it's normally to go over our PPC lead flow and all that. And he's like, guys, 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 guys. I'm so excited. Wait, stop. No, don't worry about this. Here's where we're going. I mean, he was just like over the moon yeah. thrilled when that yeah. finally came through. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, what I'm also seeing, you know, Realtor.com for years has advertised you guys as the number one spender and, you know, the top agent. And you guys have started to diversify in a big, big way. And um, you've also had to adjust based on the lead source, top of funnel, bottom funnel as well. Um, uh, someone was asking about sending a push listing via text. Uh, do your ISAs use the CRM for that? Yeah, we do everything. They do everything through follow up, boss. Okay. Um, and then uh, closing rates. Uh, do you guys have like? Do you track what percentage of leads are are actually closed, or you know, uh, how do you track that stuff? We we analyze everything, uh, you know, and and that's part of why we started doing the lead rejuvenation for um, you know brokerages almost seven years old now, and for the first six years, um, we tracked right at two percent conversion. Um, mm -hmm. Happy to report, after getting the systems and processes and DAs and all of these things in place, we were tracking two percent through all of 2020. Um, the last quarter of the year, we were able to to impact that annualized conversion rate by a quarter of 1%. So we actually ended the end of the year at 2.25, 2.27%. Uh, so that just kind of validated everything we'd done in the earlier months to get all of these systems and processes in place. So, you know, our goal for us is, I, I think realistically, we could be at four with everything we've got in place. Uh, and, you know, obviously with the pay-per-click right now, it's relatively new for us. So we're seeing, we're seeing a great trend line upwards, uh, but we knew that they were all more top of funnel, right? So they're working yeah. through what we're noticing yesterday is that you know leads that came in in January? We're starting to see more closes. February, we're seeing more. So that's all starting now to 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 come through. Just kind of leveraging what we call the 20-20-60 rule, right? 20% yeah. are ready to come back now. 20 never, and 60% will be six months to two years. So we just kind of knew that was going to be the case. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, man, so many you guys have so many people that want to know how you do stuff. So many questions. Um, Let's see, loan officers, do they uh, do they purchase leads or oh, that's actually not the question. Who, how well, do, we, you, do, you, do you have your own mortgage company? Yes. Okay. okay. I want to do that. And, and they suffer from the same thing that, that our agents do. They, they I was talking to an LO just yesterday when, or the other day when we were in um, in Tampa. She's getting 30 leads a week. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. We don't, we don't send the lead to the loan officer until we've changed the stage to hot or warm. Like he was just getting overwhelmed. It just it was it was too much. Um. And so as far as um, you know, with lead flow, um, with leads that are top of funnel, um. How how is the process go for your ISAs? Do they just call through a list every day in the pond, or how are they prioritizing who to call in the top of funnel business? Because we've talked a lot about the Realtor.com bottom bottom of funnel, but when you've got stuff that you've got to hold on to a lot longer, it takes more organization. We have so many leads now that just getting through our Y priority and hand raiser from the pond each day takes a lion's effort. Um, for that overflow for stuff that's more top of funnel, um, we will go through and have them call last last visit. I don't I don't sort it based okay. on creation date. I sort okay. it based on last time visited. So even if they didn't do a hand raising activity, if they were at the portal, so that's how they start working through those leads that are that are non hand raiser. Yeah, yeah, and we both know that for years we weren't able to do that, right? I mean. The fact that the consumer is using our website for me is just, it's a phenomenon that uh, I want to keep going. Um, let's see. Do you guys do any email marketing with your, your database or is it mostly just, no? Okay. It's, it's all retargeting. Okay. Okay. The um, on and uh, transaction management. Uh, do you use the deals section and follow a boss or something else? 
Um, in terms of tracking, we, we use both. Uh, we, we require that a deal is created. We actually have a check and balance in place, so we keep a separate spreadsheet as well of all the deals coming in. Um, and then when something moves from pending to closed, our uh, compliance team actually checks, make sure we have all the docs, make sure there's a, a, a deal in follow-up boss, uh, and then they then move that to, uh, to closed stage. All right. Um, so, Robert, question for you. When you look back over the last several years, uh, those point, those growing pain points, <clears throat> when you reached a point where you're growing and it's causing good problems, but they're problems, uh, do you have any advice on how to, or best practices to get through those, those seasons where, you know, you're moving to that next stage of your business? Well, it was always a problem, and the big problem was always money, okay? So, <laughs> being that I started this with $148, you know, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that, yeah, well, you're, uh, you know, may have some cash flow issues. So, and uh, the first major cash flow issue that I had was when Zillow merged with Trulia, and then I had to spend 50% more just to get the same amount of leads from Zillow because the Trulia leads were, weren't any good for me. And then, of course, they went to market-based pricing, which really wasn't only for about a month, and then it was manipulated or whatever. And, uh, and so the leads went up by a factor of about 10. And so I pretty quickly got to a stage where the incoming wasn't meeting the outgoing. So that was a pain point there, you know, and uh, I think that's when I switched to realtor.com. But all the time, I built a little bit of infrastructure with it. So... Um, I jokingly say I built a company that runs itself and runs without me and now it runs without me and I get kind of bored sometimes, you know, so I feel, I feel left out. <laughs> oh, man, uh, that's so good. You got to let go to grow though, right? You I mean, have to let go and you have to take yourself out of production, you know, yeah. and I took myself out of production early on and, and, and I mean, starting with $148 at the end of the first year, I had 45 agents. So, um, and, um, and we used to advertise everywhere and, um, Craigslist or whatever, you know, and we didn't turn many people down when I interviewed them. I always told them they were perfect for, for the area that I was hiring them for. And, uh, sometimes that was true and sometimes it wasn't. And, uh, so, but you have to, taking yourself out of production is probably the number one, you know, okay. and then, and I hadn't heard of getting VAs in the Philippines those days. So, but, but that has been a huge part of our growth uh, ability is to get these VAs in the Philippines and Venezuela. And, and I'm sure that we will, there's all types of different things that we can do. I mean, we can hire teams over there just to call FISBOs and hire teams to call expireds and, and stuff like that. And they already know how to do it. They've been doing it for years, you know. So, right. so right. Uh, it's just of how many people do we want to have out there? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think the key, and again, whether it's a large team or a small team, you know, especially for those that are small teams getting ready to grow, right? Get the process set up now. Be ready for that growth and make sure it's scalable, right? Um, I think that's the, the biggest challenge we face and, and the way we're looking forward now is, we're already big. We want to be bigger. You know, we're trying to make decisions now on how quickly if we decide to, because the way, the way Dan and Robert work is it's a, it's a, this big idea today. And then tomorrow it needs to be this big because that's their idea of scaling. Right. Um, so everything we're looking at now is, can we take it from one to 90 very quickly? Right. I just, okay. I, I don't know how else to describe it. And unfortunately, I, I, the, the day I wrote my first deal uh, as an agent, as a single agent, I'd follow up boss. And uh, so uh, I've never had another CRM. And uh, yeah, I've been with Dan Caulfield the whole way, you know, so, uh, uh, wow. so it's been, that, that has been huge because I have, one of my recurring nightmares is that uh, I wake up and we've decided to change um, CRMs. That's something I never want to do and absolutely can never foresee us ever doing that. Because just for us to do it would be a nightmare. Yeah, the, um, so both of you kind of said the, something very similar. Uh, you know, 
your best practice leverage really is, is, you know, you went, you said, go out of production, hire VAs. You know, you said, how do we go from one to 90? Um, <coughs> how do you leverage everybody's time um, yeah. so that they can do a better job? Yeah. And uh, that's, that's killer advice. If those of you that are, you've gotten to where you're at in your business because you worry about everything. Uh, what it's so, taken to get you where you are is not going to what it's take to get you where you want to go. And you're going to, uh, everyone has different abilities. So we in Ocala uh, discovered that we hired girls from the local junior college to be our uh, call center. And uh, we had about 16 of them. And uh, most of them were bilingual that we hired because it was an advantage that they were bilingual. Uh, one girl came to us, uh, uh, she's a DACA student, uh, doesn't have a green card yet, but he's going to get one. Uh, mm -hmm. She just had a 22nd birthday and she came to us. She was a hostess in a restaurant and she's now running our call center in Venezuela. And she just turned 22 and wow. uh, done an outstanding job. Her name is Lizbeth Ordonez. She might be listening. I don't know, but uh, she'll be so embarrassed if, uh, if she is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these girls do an outstanding job and we've been able to leverage the ability of a bunch of these girls that uh, that started with us in the call center and they're now working and doing our numbers now disbursement authorizations and and working in our accounting department and doing an outstanding job so okay okay um so are you guys losing much business do you think uh because of accents or um, you know, people not necessarily understanding the language uh, the, from the virtual uh, virtual assistants. There's Somebody always going asking. to be one or two, but generally, um, I'm sorry. Florida uh, has a lot of people from different countries here, yeah. and so it's uh, it's a very cosmopolitan state. I think if we're in some other states, we would lose more. But there are so many different languages and accents that people hear on an everyday basis here that uh, that uh, I don't think it's a big deal. So. Okay. okay, I will say that too, especially with the uh, with the Venezuelan team. Uh, what Robert was saying earlier is, is fully accurate. We have folks that are school teachers, attorneys, doctors uh, that find themselves without work uh, that are coming to work for us. So these are highly educated fully bilingual, you know, fluent, uh, and there might be a hint of an accent, uh, and some more than others, but, but still, uh, the, 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 the conversations are great. Plus we're always auditing the calls. Uh, yeah. Debbie, uh, and her team are auditing the Philippines calls and, and she and their team works with them on how to pronounce certain words if they see some difficulties. And it's the same way with the Venezuela team. Mm -hmm. So we're always auditing those calls. We okay. have about probably 250 agents who, uh, have, may have an accent in uh, who are actual agents for us, you know, and then right, if, right. if they ever call the boss, the boss has got an accent. What can I say? You know, <laughs> right, right. right. Um, another question. This is actually from Eric, who's a Ylopo user. Hope you're well, Eric. Um, so <laughs> if the ISA is chatting with the lead via uh, follow up boss or stars and they convert the lead, how does the ISA hand it off to the agent what's that process look like so if it's if it's one of our um difference between isa uh versus the va so if it's an isa call that's a that's just calling through the database it is typically that you know would you like to talk someone with someone now conversation we do that uh first to claim process and then we actually merge the call so much in the same way zillow does uh, hi, Barry. Uh, I've got Robert on the line. Robert's your local expert. He's here to talk to you, you know, and, and off, off and running you go. There are instances where, uh, you know, the, the lead might not have time to talk right now, but confirms a telephone appointment. So then the, the, the ISA will go in and set that appointment for that agent that claims the lead. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, man. Okay. So this is one, Robert. What do you see as the future of Zillow and Realtor.com? Well, so uh, I think almost in my mind, Zillow will almost certainly 
become a brokerage. Mm -hmm. And the people who are getting flex leads at the moment will be their partners and or employees <laughs> quite possibly. Um, mm -hmm. Probably salaried agents with a, with the bonus. And I think- Similar to like Redfin? Yeah, they'll be, they'll be like a cross between Redfin and EXP. And okay. uh, so I think almost certainly that's going to happen. Realtor.com, who would know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, so. That's good answer. Good and answer. And it will probably be whatever Zillow does, okay? <laughs> yeah. But of course, they can't become a brokerage, so. Right. Uh, right. So they. Who knows? Right. So, so I did. Um, uh, oh, go ahead. In the chat just a second ago, it asked if if we just use Ylopo for remarketing, or do we also uh, buy leads? Uh, actually, Ylopo <laughs> handles all of all of our pay per click uh, business. Uh, so they're running all of our PPC for Facebook. They're running the Google local services ad. They we we go direct to that. They're experts in their field. Let them run with that and and uh, you know make their money. And and in addition to that, we have them do the uh, the remarketing as well. Well, yeah, because that was. Sorry, go ahead. No, you. You're more. I noticed the question here from uh, Kat Fiorentino. Uh, what's the biggest nightmare of doing direct hire people in another country? Well, we we only direct hire in the Philippines. We use a company in Venezuela, and I wouldn't say that there are any nightmares. The people are, are largely college educated. Uh, you get to do an interview by Zoom online. If uh, that's what I would do anyway. And uh, if you like the person, fine. And if you don't, that's fine too. Now, bearing in mind that they pretty much all work remotely. They're working from home because the Philippines is 6,000 islands. And so, and, and so there's a little give and take. You may be doing a call and you hear a rooster in the background. That's not unusual, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, but it's largely not a nightmare, so. Yeah. I think. I think the biggest nightmare uh, is if you don't have the system set up and if you don't have the training set up, you need to train them. Uh, you need to make sure that you've got the script. You need to make sure that you're ready to turn the keys over to them and then able to track their production. That's the only nightmare. And it's really not difficult if you've set yourself up for success. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I use time doctor to manage, to make sure that they're actually working. Do you guys yeah. use anything like that where they yeah. Yeah. manages their, okay. Um, and, uh, Paul says, gentlemen, he's a 30 year mortgage boss, been in the top one. This has been one of the top one to two webinar zoom calls I've ever been on. Thank you for this information and the useful webinar. So, uh, you well, know, you guys, you guys really gave it to us. You didn't, you didn't, I don't feel like you held back any secrets. Well, we, um, you know, we realized that we've been really blessed in this business. And mm -hmm. so we want to help people do business, be successful as much as we can. And there's actually nothing that we hold back. Now then, having said that, I'm not uh, telling people that if they start off today with $148 and spend it on Zillow, that in six years down the road, you're gonna be doing a billion and a half because right. times have changed. <laughs> so, yes, they have. Yes, they there, have. There are certain ways and tools that you can use to set yourself up for success. And uh, follow-up boss has been outstanding. Why Lopo? I think that anyone who's really serious about uh, the real estate industry, you have to have it and uh, use pretty much everything that they do. Uh, and that's what we do. So, Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it really does seem like uh, when you guys, it does appear as though you're not concerned about what the portals are going to do or not do that you've really taken control of your own destiny which i think for a lot of small agents they need to hear that they need to know that look you know you're not afraid of it you you've got your own business model you know what's working for you and uh you're just going to do business as usual so uh so in five minutes i'm going to actually be having a zoom with realtor.com talking about why the leads are so expensive so <laughs> uh but uh that, our general, uh, and, and we've said this uh, online before, is that our ultimate goal is to get away from the portals. We spend very little with Zillow uh, mm -hmm. because I don't want to work for them down the road. And uh, I'm too old. 
And uh, so Realtor.com, we still spend a lot of money with them, um, but we try to hold them accountable on the prices and it's not easy, uh, but um, we're still getting an ROI from them. And if you're getting an ROI, yeah, that's the name of the game. So that's right. I get that's people right. complaining about Zillow for years since I got into this business. People have complained about Zillow. Oh, they're stealing our listings, whatever. Look, they're just a tool. Use them, you know, right. use them, right. make money out of them, do it again, repeat, like, you know. And, and uh, so I started my business with Zillow and uh, yeah, it's just, hey. I used them to the max. And then when I switched to realtor.com, they couldn't take a joke. And uh, so <laughs> kicked me off the advisory board, whatever. <laughs> um, well, Don, any, I see you, what your, looks like you're going through checkout. Any parting, parting words for those that are listening in? He might have frozen on. He might have already checked out. <laughs> yeah. Can, oh, can you no, hear me? Yeah, now we can. No, I, think, I, I think the big thing uh, in talking about the transition away from the portals into your own pay-per-click, scale it in, right? Um, know that it's going to happen. Know that they're more top of funnel. So, you know, stage it so that you've got your buy-in pay-per-click so that you start flowing those leads in and then gradually scale away from the portal stuff. I think that's the... The biggest key to what is going to be the biggest key to our success and more profitability is just that. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Robert, Don, you guys look, you, uh, you're, you're known for being generous and sharing and, uh, you totally lived up to your, uh, reputation. I appreciate the time. I know the LCA community does and, uh, wish you both uh, a great day and, uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk again real soon. Wish me good luck on Thank the next you. Zoom. <laughs> yes. Take care. Yes. Just... <laughs>